you, uh, thank you, Deepak, for setting the stage. Um, and you're right. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, pandemic has challenged uh, you know everything pretty much. Uh, you know, from uh, from from where I see, uh, you know, all the the tenets of about the work, the workplaces, and work life balances. So you know, the from from past many years. Uh, 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 you know the the decade old practices. Everything's been uh, been challenged. You know the lockdowns that we had initially started off with. Uh, you know uh, and and started using uh, the technology and moved the workforces uh, uh, back home. Uh, you know the has 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 spurred this big question in everyone's mind that is this going to stay? Are uh, the offices of future uh, are they going to uh, uh, going to disappear? Uh, so, you know, we, we all know TCS, right? The, so uh, TCS was the first one in India to make that, that announcement that by 2025, 25% uh, of their work, uh, uh, their workforce will, um, uh, will work from, uh, from offices. 75% of it will actually work from anywhere. Uh, and then following the heels, there were many other companies uh, in India which have been making similar announcements. So RPG Group, I mean, recently, uh, which has been a, 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 you know, very uh, old uh, uh, conglomerate in India, uh, not so much uh, you know, uh, into IT, uh, uh, but uh, you know, they have also made uh, you know, almost a similar uh, announcement. So, so, so many organizations uh, you know, which are maintaining that work from home policies are here, uh, are there for fu foreseeable future. I'm sure it is now the optimal time for us to plan for a post-pandemic workplace strategy by revisiting the conventional wisdom and uh, behind the centralized offices and also the office designs that uh, that we have so far set ourselves up for. You know, for me uh, personally, uh, uh, Deepak, uh, you know, I was uh, sharing earlier that there is a there is a marginal utility curve. You know, uh, initially uh, 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 working from home was fun. We were there was, was a lot of anxiousness, and uh, you know we were all glued on to our uh, to our laptops. There were longer hours, uh, uh, but gradually it has it has matured, it has saturated, and uh, you know it probably reached a peak, and that and then you know it's 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 almost on a on a decline, and it is only uh, six months as of now. Right, and when we are, uh, you know, talking about future, we're talking about this, uh, 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 this work on a, on a more uh, permanent basis. So, and I also, uh, 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 as you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, talk to a lot of my uh, team members. Uh, we have about seventy thousand workforce. A lot of our team members, uh, uh, seventy percent of our workforce stays. Uh, in uh, in much smaller housing, so a two BHK and uh, three BHK homes, where you know there is a, a husband and a wife who have office to attend in the morning, and also the kids have uh, have their schools which are going on in parallel, and also in many times there are parents also who stay uh, stay with them. So 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 can this productivity sustain in a in a in a longer run? Uh, you know I know for sure that my team members want to return to work. But also at the same time, there is a huge demand for flexibility. It's not regimented whether you know they want to come into into work when the the the, the office wants, but also uh, uh, they would want to retain the flexibility with them. Yeah, uh, India also uh, uh, you know has been behind the pandemic curve. Uh, so many countries uh, have actually seen this coming. They have seen the peak and 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 seen the the. The, the the decline of infection, whereas in India we are still, uh, you know, gravitating towards the peak. So uh, so I won't talk about about maybe China because you know there are a lot of emotions attached with it. But let's we also have a few other countries for us to look at in front of us, maybe like South Korea, you know, which is uh, which has been very highly regarded for its response to COVID and its success. Uh, in limiting the spread of virus, you know, so most of the employees in Korea have actually uh, uh, already returned to, uh, you know, to their offices. Uh, you know, office towers in Seoul have over 80% occupancy compared with the with the pre-COVID levels. So uh, workers 
everyone throughout the country actually have very willingly adopted uh, the health and safety protocols such as face masks and you know frequent hand washing disinfection sanitation so for them you know uh, uh, the life seems to be coming back to normal in a short while and then there are a lot of other countries like maybe uh, some like taiwan where uh, uh, covid's actually not even made uh, you know a, a huge impact uh, although they're getting impacted in a different way because of cross border uh, restrictions and uh, and global uh, uh, recession but uh, for them life is uh, is as usual but also you know bringing it back again to india uh, is very different india uh, have a very very different way of uh, of life uh, we are the second worst hit country uh, uh, in the world at least for now uh, but at the same time the 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 fastest uh, uh, rate of infection we very uh, quickly moved away from the world's fastest growing large economy to the world's fastest contracting large economy you know when we all saw the the results of uh, of uh, of quarter 2 uh, uh, earlier this year so uh, disappearing office space you know uh, uh, for 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 companies and corporates in india uh, also like you said you know has huge commercial considerations you know for most uh, companies uh, so but but the question that still remains in a, in a, in in everyone's mind is could this model work you know could uh, could this distributed model could this work from home model uh, be in a position to sustain uh, the employee performance and and productivity and also uh, what impact can it have on the moral fiber of the companies so so let's start our uh, our conversations uh, you know and try and attempt uh, some very obvious uh, uh, questions in terms of the very first one that comes uh, and that is being asked is the office going to disappear i mean it's a very provocative uh, uh, question but uh, but 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 that also means that may not disappear but you know will it come down significantly or what sort of new uh, typologies and technologies that would come up uh, and 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 then uh, 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 we'll move on to uh, you know to take up some of the the pnc or people and culture questions in terms of if the environment is changing significantly then how do we do we do we st still stay relevant how do we still uh, manage uh, our our human currency and human capital and uh, and still able to sustain the moral fiber uh, of the of the organization so so why don't we start the conversation uh, let's say uh, uh, with you aditya um, so you know let me start with you uh, um, with what, what what do you see uh, uh, are some of the the emerging trends uh, in today's real estate market you know on the basis of which you're advising your customers you know given the 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 cash and the cost and the savings matrix uh, you know on one side uh, but also at the same time the you know the the hygiene disinfection uh, 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 increased expectations on the other side and also some of the, the uh, some of the trends that you see are emerging in the short run but also how are companies and developers more importantly looking at it, this in a in a in a longer term thank you thank you Aksh. so i think uh, when we when we as you know as a real estate advisor look at this entire space uh, there are three or four uh, areas or either kind of think uh, forces that are pulling in opposing directions that we need to consider so one as one view a lens is purely from the corporate from the organization's viewpoint second view is from the real estate industry and associated services viewpoint and then the third one uh, is around business continuity going forward that is a third bucket and in the middle of these three if you would is the customer experience which is essentially the employees and when we bring the all bring all four of these together there is a bit of a you know matrix and there is uh, there is a bit of adjustment and it's not one size fits all frankly so when we look at uh, uh, and and I'll just take one at one at a time if you look at from the lens of a corporate and the clients that we're working with uh, up front when the pandemic hit it was all hands on deck jump ship send everyone home most organizations about 97 98 percent working remote even the confidentiality concerns that some of the 
some of our clients have had from their clients and they would have uh, you know access controlled spaces all that was gone and everybody had to figure it out they had to adjust along uh, on, on along the lines of you know what the pandemic was what required the industry to do at the same time there was this realization in corporates that you know business continuity has needs to take a different lens we need to take look at it different different in a different way it doesn't have to be a natural disaster or you know a, a tsunami or excessive rains or flooding force majeure is also something like this pandemic and how do we address that so that also came into play for that standardization of processes and take looking at real estate with a different lens started to come at the same time then the third thing that hap- that's been happening with uh, with large corporates is we don't know what this means so let's go into cash preservation mode so when we bring the three together workforce from home some of the fears and uh, concerns of clients kind of put to rest everybody adjusted everybody is kind of uh, you know getting used to the new normal uh, looking at standardization of processes at the same time then comes the big question do we really need all this real estate now anyway now that's different for different industries different companies for example if we uh, when we are talking to some of the banking clients that we have uh, they're saying branch rationalization i mean even anyways branch utilization was on the decline with this people are not even going to the atms as much as they would otherwise so overall the footprint for the banking industry they're look, taking a very hard look at it what do we need to do with that and i mean uh, chandresh is here he can talk about the it industry with uh, a lot more authority than i can but i mean everything that we are hearing some of our clients they're saying they're not saying that you know from 100% do we come down to 80 60 70 they're saying we are at 3% do we go up to 30% 40% 50% where do we go the conversation is flipped <clears throat> then comes your <clears throat> other side which is uh, you know the real estate industry industry and associated services really there the industry is saying okay now the new normal there is a there are a whole set of new requirements which were never there like social distancing health safety security sanitization uh, leveraging of technology iot and other technologies and then going on to the cloud so there are all these opportunities that have opened up while there is there could potentially be a contraction in the square footage that the industry is servicing but revenue per square foot is likely to go up so it's again a push and pull over there then i mean we already spoke about the continuity now uh, organizations are saying large organizations which have gics in india they're saying why can't we leverage the gic to provide a set of standardized services and because we have a network of all these processing centers across the globe we can drive business continuity even for our real estate services from these gics so there are some some large organizations that are going aggressively and setting up the real estate services processes practice within their center so, and there again the cost is because there is a saving when you consolidate and you turn. so everything is you know for the real estate industry they're seeing a contraction but an uptick in revenue for organizations they are seeing a reduced requirement for space uh and uh, therefore savings and these are hard cash savings they are thinking about you know capex to opex uh, you know sale and lease back flex working space all those other things which can overall have a consolidation of footprint and deloitte has done we have done that ourselves uh, we've given up one office in gurgaon but with all these three things in the center is the uh, is the end customer which is the employees the employees are saying i mean office was especially when we talk about india office is in india it's hardly ever the case where office is treated as people carry two cell phones switch one off which is personal walk into office at 9 am turn the uh, office phone on and then 5 pm they turn off the office phone and walk out and office is office then it is my personal if there people come in at 9 10 and then stay till 8 9 easy and the social circle also is in offices for most employees even more so for junior employees and really it's a it's a very active social stimulus hub office and then there is work that happens yes they do work but it fundamentally ends up becoming their life now they are all locked up in their homes they all have to sit in home they are all itching to come back to work uh, some of them have tried to coming in some cases we've seen people have tried to come back to work but then realize that that whole social setup is gone there's nobody around so 
they've gone back home. Okay. But they're all, a lot of the people are just waiting to come back. And a lot of work is happening, like you mentioned, Aksh, right? I mean, there is, uh, you know, ungodly hours and weekends have disappeared and the personal, the lines between per personal and office hours have kind of blurred or completely gone. They did go off for a period of time because there was a lot of paranoia around pandemic and how do we be more effective. Right now, everybody is saying productivity is go has gone up. We've spoken, a lot of our clients are saying we're seeing better productivity. But as you mentioned, Akshamin, it was there for a period of time. There is, there could be a fatigue that sets in. And once the fatigue sets in, the lines are going to be harder, more rigid. And once that happens, it might not be the same. Therein comes the customer experience part. So all the, all the stakeholders here with employees at the center need to figure out or are thinking today, how do we keep the experience alive and as effective as it was when it was within the four walls of our office. So it's about making sure that virtual working is there, technology is implemented and ability for them to come back. For example, one of the clients was saying, you know, in a, technology company saying that if it is a non-ODC setup, uh, our cost is going to go up 2x if we want to manage the pandemic and social distancing and technology and everything. Uh, if it is an ODC setup, 3x. Because what this customer experience is driving is square foot per capita has to go up significantly. That square footage, that increase in square footage plays, uh, plays well for the employees, but then there is a certain degree of optimization that is going to happen spaces are going to become much more nicer, if you would, safer, uh, with very heavy le leverage of technology. Uh, but overall, net-net, there is likely to be a delta for every organization in terms of either stay where we are or try to rationalize a little bit. Now, I mean, we're not, uh, no, granted, I mean, we're not talking about pharma companies, we're not talking about Amazon. Amazon is hiring 20,000 people. I mean, they're still going to, they, they will need office space at some degree, some point. Uh, pharma companies are growing, but generally in the industry, otherwise, that's the, that's, the, that, that's the temperature that we sense. And everybody's investing and technology was, I mean, it wasn't like there was no digital transformation program. Technology was not being implemented. It was already there. It has, this whole situation has accelerated the need for it. And essentially just employee experience is at the center, you know, duty of care. I mean, some organizations, there, there are some clients who are saying, how do we relook at the facility requirement? We're going to consolidate, we're going to take more space, but how do I design it better? What do I need to do? Do I need to take more space? Because now I need, I have a duty of care to my employees, mental well-being. Do I need to have more touch points? How do I structure it? Do I do hoteling, but then keep mixing it up? Do I have more events? Do I set aside? What I granted, I might save something on real estate, but a part of that, I'm just going to keep it on the side for my employees' well being. How I deploy it, we will figure it out, but we need to do that. So that's broadly what we're seeing. And so there is a cost takeout, but then there is a net addition experience is there. But in terms of there is a fundamental, you know, tweaking of the structure with which this entire real estate setup has been working for years. And end of the day, population is only growing. So I don't think that real estate overall, broadly speaking, as an industry is going to con contract. But per organization, per square footage is going to improve, in increase. But overall square footage for the organization might optimize a little. And technology investments are going to be had. But do you also see uh, organizations uh, you know, uh, making the most of the current situation when there is pressure on the real estate, uh, on the commercial real estate, and the prices are actually, uh, in many cases, also getting uh, getting uh, corrected, uh, are they going for some long-term bets, and are they going for you know uh, picking up the right property and you know uh, uh, having a a rent-free period for a while, and then uh, uh, you know again uh, uh, tying themselves into long-term leases? Uh, is that a trend that you're seeing, or you're seeing more where where the companies are looking at, okay, uh, while we see uh, the rates may come down, but uh, we probably are better off using the co-working spaces and the you know uh, the co-works and the V-works of the of the of the world uh, in case uh, you know uh, we were to increase the demand. So they are actually rather than tying themselves, looking at more flexibility available at their end. So I mean, it it, it depends. I mean, it depends 
what part of the uh, you know corporate sector are we talking about i mean if you're talking about wipro or siemens you know i mean large organizations with large setup with gic's or servicing clients I mean, if wipro were to shut shut its uh, uh, services today half the banking industry would uh, would not be able to function right so it's not I mean, they are i mean large corporates are not necessarily looking at you know they're not being opportunistic some of them most of them own campuses others have leases and they've been in a growth phase and all that could happen is planning for that growth might stop and stay where we are and restructure within that in terms of getting out of leases and renegotiation i mean that's it's a lot happening in the residential sector frankly i mean i was just talking to somebody uh, the other day in new york central park when it was 5 6000 dollar a month rent for an apartment a one bedroom apartment is down to 2 2 and a half thousand dollars but two months free if you sign a one year lease uh, in the in the retail sector you know these malls and all a lot of that is happening but in the large co corporate setups not as much it is more around optimizing internally figuring out how do we do that uh, some are also saying that you know it i i literally have to do backflips and bend over backwards to get approvals from headquarters hq for an additional office if i have two offices i'm just going to stay there i'm not going to change anything because i know i'm going to grow i might not get it. but if you go down to you know some of these new newer organizations startups if you call them shouldn't be calling them startups anymore but they are saying that okay i was growing my business plan was there i have certain amount of investment which i was going to deploy in a certain way now um, you know if, if if it's a startup in the travel industry they're like okay now all the square footage that i have i don't need because my business has come to zero so now they are saying that if my lease is up for renewal so it is also very opportunistic in the corporate side if the lease is up for renewal they can do something otherwise it is a relationship with a large national level india level realtor you don't want to mess around with it because eventually things will settle real estate is always going to be something that they require so it's not then companies are not necessarily upsetting the apple cart but if the lease is up for renewal then there is a there are there are conversations that are happening it's a tough conversation it's saying that what do we need to do uh, if there is a high risk facility i need to move to a better facility because i need to take care of employees so moving into a new facility that movement is happening consolidation is happening but